Hello and welcome to the big picture. The new NDA government, which is not even a week old, has raised the hackles among the Muslims in particular and many others in general when its Minority Affairs Minister Dr. Najma Heptullah made a controversial statement that Muslims are not minorities. This statement coming along with the statement that there can be no reservation for Muslims, which many Muslims are not in favour if it is based on religion, has set off a debate. The fact is that Muslims form 13.4% of the population and form majority of the constitutionally recognised minorities. However, will that justify the statement of the new Minority Affairs Minister? Is this in tune with the thinking within the BJP? And if it is, what is the significance of this statement and what will be its implications? In the light of these assertions by Dr. Heptullah, will the schemes designed by the designed for the Muslims by the UPA government following the Sacha Committee recommendations become redundant. Many questions have cropped up which we will discuss today with K. Rehman Khan, former Minister for Minority Affairs in the previous UPA government on the phone line from Bangalore, Soli Sorabji, eminent lawyer and former Attorney General of India, Vajahat Habibullah, former Chairman National Commission for Minorities, Javed Nakwi, senior journalist and Dr. Sambit Patra, spokesperson of the BJP. Welcome to all of you. Sambit, I would like to come to you first. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> uh, so, is this, the st is this the stand of the BJP also, what Dr. Heptullah has said, that Muslims are not minorities beca because they are too large in number? No, Girish, you have to see, the whole thing has to be read in a context. I mean, the first what day... What is the context? Nah, that's what I was trying to explain. The first day, uh, Najmaji comes to take the chair of the office that she has been ascribed to, she was asked by innumerable number of reporters as to what she was going to do about the welfares of Muslims. And then she reacted that, why are you asking me only about Muslims? I am not a Muslim minister, I have become a minorities minister. So there, there are ample number of other minorities also who are included within the gambit of this uh, ministry. So one has to ask about them as well. And she even shot out to say that the Parsis are the ones who are almost at the verge of extinction, 69,000 uh, totally left in India. So I believe uh, what she meant to say was within the campus of the ministry that she has been accorded to, the ones other than Muslims are the minorities and the Muslims are the majority within that campus. That's, that's very, so, so, so the campus I is think, the context. I think, I think it's a very creative defense you're, you're giving because what she has said is Muslims were not minorities by any stretch of the imagination and instead Parsis with their dwindling population. And in, in quotes, the report says, Muslims are not, we have heard this on television also. Muslims are not minorities, Parsis are. We have to see how we can help them so that the numbers don't diminish. I don't think anybody has a problem with anybody helping the Parsis. But uh, let me get Mr. Rahman Khan in on this. Mr. Rahman Khan, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Khan, uh, how would you look at this statement and what do you think are the implications of this statement? Sambit Patra has given a very creative defense of what Dr. Heptullah says. See, the statement of uh, the Minority Affairs Minister Srimati Najma Heptullah is very confusing. And uh, the minorities are defined under the Minorities Commission Act right. of 1992 and the Article 30 of the Constitution speaks about the religious minorities. Right. Now, the, there are empty in Supreme Court decisions also right. that uh, the, uh, there are religious minorities. Who are the religious minorities? To say that uh, the, uh, the simple this thing is any, community, any religion which is less, the number is less than the majority religion. This is an accepted fact and then we have been working on that. And now to suddenly say that uh, Muslims are not uh, minorities, only Parsis, we are all, there are now six notified minorities under the Minorities Commission Act, and they all enjoy certain constitutional rights under Article 29 and Article 30, and it is a constitutional provision. Whether the minister says that there is Muslims or minorities or not minorities, it is immaterial because the Article 30 recognizes the Muslims as and, and the act which is the statute passed by the parliament also recognize Muslims as the uh, minorities along with other minorities. It is not that Muslim alone are the minorities. Absolutely. There are six minorities. It, is, it, it may be because 
Muslims happens to be the largest minority among the minorities. Sometimes the Muslim word is used, but it should not be taken that the minorities is only Muslim. And that that is that uh, if the honourable minister meant that it is only Muslims, it she is not right. No, I don't think she said that. But anyway, uh, I'll come back to you. Uh, uh, let me go to Mr. Soli Sorabji. Mr. Mr. Sorabji. Mr. Sorabji, can you hear me? Okay, Mr. Yeah, Surabji, yeah. how would you look at this entire controversy? Yeah, go on. How, how would you look at this entire controversy in the I context of what, what the constitution says? You know, but do you think that this, this could become a political issue which outside the scope of the, of the constitution also? No, no, I don't think it need become a political issue. First of all, Minorities are recognized by the constitution. Right. There is no definition of minority, by the way, in the constitution. Now there is one test. Do you go by numerical numbers? Or the other test is, are they in a dominant position? One test proposed by an international body is yes. that any group right. which is in a non-dominant position and not able to have his decisive vote in decision making, we call the minority. Right. That there may be women, there may be gays, there may be others. But the question is, Muslims are definitely minorities. So many judgments also go on that footing, on that basis. Maybe, maybe they are the largest, largest minority among the minorities. Yes. Okay. And I think the minister's statement should be taken to understand that it is not only Muslims, but all minorities which should be protected. I and by the way, let me say, the Parsis are not going to get extinct, as the minister thinks. <laughs> <laughs> what a relief. Mr. Abibullah, there is no definition of minorities, as Mr. Sorabji <coughs> says, but this is something which I am sure, you know, if, even if you go into the Constituent Assembly debates, we will find a lot of uh, reference to you know, why the Constitution yeah. makers finally came to this, to the conclusion. So, so where do we where do we go from here after this statement by the minister? Well, I would partly agree with Mr. Butra in my answer to you because very often while addressing gatherings of Muslims uh, as uh, chairman of the National Commission of Minorities, I would uh, advise Muslims not to look upon themselves as minorities but to look upon themselves as the second largest majority. If okay. you divide India according to, according to that religious grouping, then they are the second largest majority. And India has uh, among the largest Muslims, uh, Muslim population in the world. Second largest. So, uh, so well, there's a dispute about second or third. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> among the largest. The point, is, the point that I wanted to make is that, yes, these are, these are questions of semantics. You call them minorities, you call them not minorities. The question really is, do the Muslims face a special challenge which requires special attention by the government? Yes, they do, and that is why they're classified as minorities. It's also been upheld in the case of Baal Patel versus the Union of India. Mr. Rahman mentioned, of course, Supreme Court judgments, Baal Patel versus the Union of India, 2005, which actually was discussing the question of whether Jains are, are a minority or not, and therefore they had said yes. yes. But the challenges faced by different minorities are different. Right. For example, the Muslims face a major challenge in terms of education levels, which the Christians do not. So the, the challenges are different, but they all require attention. And certainly, since the question of Parsis was raised, and Mr. Soli Sarabi rightly said, fortunately they're, they're not, not getting, ex getting ex extinct by any means, but the government has already got a number of very creative schemes, most notably the geo Parsi scheme, which is to to uh, to uh, to help help uh, Parsis. It's 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 uh, to help Parsis have more children, and that is a scheme which is very successful. It's working already very well. It was introduced only in the, the last plan, but it uh, and on our recommendation to the planning commission, it was included in the plan, and now it's working. It's really working, well. and also of course you know the the pr the principal the principal uh, place of worship of the Parsis in India is the Iran Shah. A temple in in uh, Udwada in Gujarat, 
and there that was being encroached upon by various various groups. But at the behest of the of the Minorities Commission, the government of Gujarat, led by Mr. Modi, was good enough to ensure that there would be no building on the premises of that uh, of that temple, and that has secured the temple. <coughs> There's also the Parazor Foundation, which is propagating the culture of the Parsis, encouraged by the National Commission of Minorities. So each each community, as I said, requires special attention. And yes, because among these the Muslims are the largest, they also face the most big the biggest challenges. We must remember that our country was born in the atmosphere of partition. Therefore, they do require a certain degree of special attention. And therefore, they have been included in all the laws I, I and don't they have been included in all the... Uh, in all I, the I don't think anybody, anybody has any uh, argument about you know the the need to protect the parsis and uh, but I, but the one of the one of the most famous parsis of india is on our show right now and he says they are not going to go extinct <laughs> in any in any manner uh, javed javed how do you, how, how do you look at this statement do you think it's a political statement made by dr heptullah what do you think is the motivation for her to make this statement uh, heptullah was with the rajiv gandhi establishment and i wonder what she has to say of her role when this shahbano thing happened she was very much part of the Congress establishment, and I would like to hear because she had a very important uh, position in that uh, setup. Uh, so I think she's switching sides, and it's there's a opportunism uh, in what she and probably her uh, grandfather Maulana Azad, who she claims lineage from, would have definitely disagreed with what her interpretation of minorities is. Be that as it may, I think the most threatened minority in India today are the people who don't get any representation and they are the liberal people. The liberals who may disagree with the concept of uh, uh, religious uh, expression or um, you know, going to the mosque every Friday or going to the mandir or the gurdwara and they have a view and they never find any room <laughs> in, in, in any of the discussion and together they come up and they are the most threatened people and particularly under this current dispensation, which is so religiously inclined, and it has come on the back of uh, religious sloganeering and how to take India to the to the future or the no, maybe but the you past. Know, let Muslims, this, as far as the Muslims are concerned, the statement of this uh, of this minority affairs minister is it something which which we need which which we need to be concerned about, or you think that this is something which will not be where you know which will not be taken seriously by 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 her own government? No, it, 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 I don't think um, really we have to look at what uh, Ms. Heptullah is trying to say. Uh, I think it's probably playing with semantics, you know, it's a little big bookkeeping uh, and, and a cultural bookkeeping, shall we say. But I think <coughs> when it comes to uh, this whole business of identity really is part of the nation building. I think the whole construct of Hindu, who is Hindu, is still a work in progress because the kind of conversions that are going on in the Dangs at the behest of VHP and Bajrang Dal and the lot RSS, the way they're going about converting people who are Buddhists, who are Dalits, who are pagans, who do not, who are animists, and they're being brought into this fold so that we so become that Hindu. Is, okay, that is, a, there is that's a, a, that's that is a separate, uh, that's a separate discussion altogether. Sambit, uh, is this, are, uh, is this, something which the bjp agrees to the, the, the in the formulation <laughs> of the of the minister of minority affairs is this something part of the bjp agenda is this part of the manifesto of the bjp how does bjp look at this whole issue of muslims and minorities hey, girish there were lots of speculation that uh, when modi takes over as a prime minister probably he would not have a minority affairs minister I mean, lots of speculation but you will see what's happened there is a minority commission mission and in fact the first debates probably that we are having today yeah, is on the minority, on minority issue. yes so uh, we should not speculate on issues and i believe what no, but not answering my question. No, no, I'm answering. I mean, if something we are discussing today, it is only because of a trivial matter. I mean, the triviality lies with the fact that, in general, we all perceive a minority affairs ministry as something which deals only with the Muslims. No, but are, nobody is. The, the, no, 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 no. It, it is just a perception. I'm saying it is just a perception in the sense that generally I we discuss about issues pertaining to a particular religion within the minority no, affairs. We and all, that is we the have all, no, no, the I agree with you. We have all we, agreed that we, you know, it is you, not the case. It is a very healthy discussion. Either, no debate is taking place. We have uh, and people of excellence over here and everyone is agreeing to the fact. The issue over here is all that Najmaji was trying to say 
was well look it is not just that we have to think of the Muslims who are the majority within the minority community let us think about the others there are other issues of the minority commission like the linguistic minorities also which comes within the ambit of the minority commissions the Anglo Indians as well as the the, the maintenance of the minority Maybe temples you're, you're still, in Pakistan not, and in India. You are still not answering my question Sambit where does the BJP as a party stand on this issue and how does it look at this at this statement of of your minority At the very minister. onset, I answered by saying that since there was a speculation that Modi government would come and would dissolve, that was formed in 2006, the ministry. It did not happen only points to the fact that we are committed to what is thought otherwise of us. No, that, that I don't think <laughs> we are still uh, very clear about what you are trying he, to say. If you do you, can you no, interpret? Perhaps it? what he's saying is he <laughs> changed the definition of minority and then keep the minority institutions uh, in that sense. We will. I, we will let, let, let me get Mr. Rahman <laughs> Khan in. Mr. Rahman Khan, yes. are you satisfied with the answer, with the with the explanation or the answer of of the BJP spokesperson here? You see, there is confusion as. Uh, uh, the spokesperson of the BJP has said, I, I agree that uh, what he said is that uh, the, the speculation was that if the, the, the present dispensation takes over, then they will be abolishing the Minority Affairs Ministry. That was the speculation which was going on. I am happy that that was not done and it, was, it is not possible. And the second thing is that as far as the statement of the Honorable Minister is concerned, yes. though he is trying to say that it should not be taken seriously. I don't know whether he has said that. I am not very sure he has said that. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> it, it, is, it is to be, it, the, the, it has created confusion. Right. It, is, it has created confusion mm -hmm. because when the day she was taking chart, and the large section of the minorities, that is Muslims, constitute about 74% of the total population of the total minorities. And um, they, as uh, uh, the, Mr. Vajahat Abubla said, each minority has a different problems. There are, we have, the ministry has addressed the problems of the different minorities. It is not, as, as it is said, that the, this happens to be the largest minority among the minorities. Certain emphasis and their problems and issues are multiple. That is why it is sometimes it will be seen to be that it is only uh, this ministry deals with the Muslim. It is not so. This ministry has dealt programs as far as the scholarship programs is concerned. We have the scholarship reaches to all sections of the minorities according to their population and proportion and the backwardness. So okay. backwardness is also within the minorities also backwardness is taken into consideration. And okay. so this is, in my humble view, this, all these are the affirmative action under the constitution. And then nobody can deny this right to anybody under the constitution. Mr. Uh, Mr. Sorabji, nobody can, th this right is something which it is, is an inalienable right and it cannot be denied to anybody. I mean, what, that's what Mr. Rahman Khan says. Do you think that, you know, this will be, th that is the situation no, as of now? But that's the constitutional provision and that's the effect of the Supreme Court judgments. Right. No one can deny that. I think we are reading too much into the minister's statement. Possibly what she meant was that Muslims are not the only minorities. And as maybe she didn't express this very clearly, I don't take her statement to be the official considered policy of the government. It was an answer to questions. I think we shouldn't read too much into it. And really, no minister can say something which goes against the constitution and the constitutional provisions. And of course, Muslims are minorities. And if you want to say they are not the only minorities, well and good. No one can dispute that. Each minority has different problems, different challenges to face. So, let's not read too much into the statement, make much hype of it. And I hope let's not start a political controversy when really none is required. Yes, Samit, you wanted yeah, to... Absolutely right. I totally concur with what Mr. Surabji has to say and uh, especially are we for... Trying to, are we making too much of what she has said? See, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. With this 24 into 7 airspace nowadays, I mean, naturally, every channel needs debating topics. <laughs> and it, it, It's good that we debate. It's not that it's bad. At least this brings on onto the table lots of issues which needs to be brought. But the most important issue is, as uh, Mr. Surabji was rightly saying, constitution is sacrosanct. No one can jump the equator of 
constitution and especially a person like Najma Hiptullah who has been a prominent parliamentarian of this country whose lineage is very prominent one in this country it's but natural that what she was referring to was in a context and that's the reason as to why a context has to be held over here when we are discussing the whole topic but let me remind you of the very important statement of Mr. Hep Mrs. Heptullah it is important to bring in development through education and there is a need to develop the education institutions of minorities this statement came in the same sequence then uh, about the line that we are mentioning, it came in the same sequence. So it's but natural that she was talking about the upliftment of the minorities, about the educational institutions, about the much needed changes that we have to see within the ministry. I believe we are just picking a single line which need not be made a controversial line. Mr. Abibullah? Yes, may do I? You, do you think that we are making too much out of it? And uh, May I attempt to answer a question which actually you put to Mr. Batra and you then accused him of being vague. Right. The very fact that the, minister, that the government has kept a Ministry of Minority Affairs, the very fact that they have appointed a Muslim, yes. a former congresswoman, as the Minister for Minority Affairs, should really answer your question. That does the ministry, does, the, does this government recognize the Muslims as a minority? So that answers no, the I question. Don't but, yes. but, there's a but. There's a but. The government probably, in there, and as Mr. Rahman said, this has created a bit of confusion. The, as, as Mr. Batra himself conceded, there were apprehensions as to what was going to be the policy of the present government towards the minority community, particularly the Muslims, although their manifesto has also clarified the point. But at this particular point, I think the Muslim community needed reassurances. Right. Those reassurances have not come as a result of this somewhat confusing statement. That is all. So, the, Mr. Rahman Khan, would you yeah. agree with Mr. Abibullah on that, that you know, this is... Uh, you, you said that there, there is a confusion, but now that what, what uh, uh, we are being told about uh, you know, what is there in the, in, the BJP, uh, in the BJP manifesto or in the agenda and things like that, is that something which is reassuring now that we are trying to uh, even uh, uh, the BJP the spokesperson says yet that come. B BJP spokesperson says that we are trying to make too much of what is, has been said. So is that, is that reassuring to the, would that be re reassuring to the Muslim community? No, definitely. See, the, the Muslim community, you see, as we said, as uh, uh, Mr. Sorabji also said, it is a constitutional, it is a Supreme Court decision and all that, nobody can change it. Now the statement has created confusion. There is a need for reassurance by the minister himself that what she meant, yeah, because there is a need for a clarification, because she is a minister. And then whoever is said about it, you see, it is not that she has not said about the other programs of the minorities. The, very, the way she has said that the minorities, the Muslims are <coughs> not the minorities. Right. That is, you see, it may be in a different context, Text you might have said that this is the largest minority, why it should be mad. But there is a confusion. There is a need, if it has to be reassured, there is a need for on, on her part to clarify that because she is to carry out the, the law, the, she has to carry out the constitutional obligation, and there should not be no confusion in her mind while implementing. Absolutely. It, it, there should not be no confusion when she is heading the minority correct. ministry. There should not be correct, any confusion correct. in Absolute. her mind. Absolute. Otherwise, the programs itself will not be able to reach the people. Y yeah, yes, yes, I want to. I'll I want, come to you sometime. I want to say that just take this business of Muslims and minorities out of. Uh, our context here and see what the Muslims in Egypt, for example, are doing. There are two clear divisions. One is uh, the orthodox Muslim who and reactionary Muslim who wants to implement an Islamic agenda in a very rigid way. And there are people who are also Muslim and they may have uh, other minorities like Coptics along with them who are resisting that. Muslims behave differently in different contexts. In Pakistan, which was created in the name of Islam, is suddenly you find that among the Muslims, the first debate that started was whether the Ahmadiyyas are Muslim or not. And they determined that they were not Muslim. In their context, we still yeah. regard them as Muslim here and in India. But uh, Shias are now being uh, <laughs> taken outside this uh, whole context of Islam and they are being targeted. So who are the people who target? Now, having said that, what we have done here is that in the name of Islam and minorities in particular where Muslims are also involved along with other minorities, we have handed them just to uh, very religiously orthodox entities. We have created those. Those are not constitutional bodies. Muslim Personal Law Board is not a constitutional body. Right. It is an executive body and Muslims have been dumped like that in, you know, that they are going to be looking after you. They can be Muslims among those 
who are resisting the kind so, of Islam that be, is being sought to be imposed in Egypt. What happens to those Muslims? What is the avenue? Do they go into the BJP's arms? No, we don't want to go into the BJ, BJP's arms and we don't want to go into the Muslim Personal Law Board. What is the provision for those people? I think you have raised a, a, a point which is a separate debate on its own. Mr. Habibullah, would you like to react to what he says? Well, certainly. Well, I'm here. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a Muslim, I'm a practicing Muslim, I'm not a Maulana. The, the Muslim Personal Law Act was passed by the mm -hmm. British with a particular purpose. So let us not go into that. Unfortunately, there has been a hangover of that since partition and has vitiated the Muslim politics. Let us not go into that. The point is, at this stage, what we are discussing is that the Muslims face certain specific challenges which are ably described in, such, in the Sachar Committee report and therefore those, those challenges Those challenges to have to be met whichever government is, yes. is in power. And I would agree. Would you, 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 would you agree with that, Sambay? That, you know, the, the Sachar Committee, committee recommendations <coughs> on the basis of which a 15-point plan has been uh, had been evolved by the uh, UPA Prime government, Minister. which seems to be under uh, uh, under uh, uh, doubt now because the, the Minority Affairs Minister has said oh, that, you know, we need to discuss this. We are not sure whether we would like to pursue that See, in the manner it is. The questions were thrown to the Minority Affairs Minister the very first day she was taking on the chair. So I believe as uh, uh, app debaters and the people, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, uh, people around me who are sitting are, they, are, are the nation builders. So I believe patience is key to patience any kind of patience is key. Let's wait and watch. And second, very important issue that I wanted to answer was on reassurance. I mean, time and again it has been said that somehow the Bharati Janata Party has not been reassuring uh, the Muslim community. And then let me tell you the kind of majority that Mr. Modi has got, it is only because of the fact that somewhere down the line in the bottom of the heart the Muslim community may have felt reassured or else we would I not have got the number that we have got. Okay, I mean this is something which is a debatable issue. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rahman Khan, very quickly, uh, your government was talking about a 4.5% reservation for backward Muslims and th things like that. Now, you, do you expect that, that to be pursued by this government or? This matter is before the Supreme Court. Yes. And uh, the, I would not like to say when the, the matter has been, so let the Supreme Court decide whether the reservation is uh, according to constitution or not. In my view, the reservation is according to constitution. It is uh, the backwardness of the Muslim, uh, based on the backwardness of the Muslim, under Article 15 and 16, this reservation has been given, and it is an affirmative action under Article 15.4 and 16.4, and then it is backwardness is the basis, not the religion as the basis. Okay. We should never take, you see, the whatever the reserve, because the... Uh, the reservation is given to only those section of the Muslims who are already there in the mandal. Right. So they, it is not that they are not enjoying reservation. So they are it not, is it's not being given. They have made as a separate group. Okay. So the matter is before the Supreme Court. Let the Supreme Court Mr. decide then. Okay, Mr. Surabji, would you like to comment on that quickly? No, I can't agree with it. Okay. That the question is not religion, backwardness. Yes. And besides, the matter is before the Supreme Court, so let's await the decision rather than make okay. our comments at this stage. I, th I think we will uh, we'll await our decision. Mr. Habibullah, would you like to comment on that very quickly? Well, on the question of reservation, as has been mentioned, this is a matter that is subdued. Yes, the Supreme so Court. So, therefore, but... But would you agree with the formulation of Mr. Rahman Khan that, you know, no, I, it's, I, I, it's on the basis of backwardness and not yes. religion? I would believe that it's so far as the, the Indian community is concerned, if you are providing reservation on a particular ground to a particular <coughs> group of people, then it must apply to all people of that particular background across the country, Some whether they have a to single line to religion would, or not. I would just repeat what uh, Mrs. Heptullah said, that it is rather an escape route, not a, sol not a solution. Okay, I think on that note we need to end. Javed, would you like to uh, add, add one, the, the one, one last word quickly? Yes, I, I, dare, I dare this BJP government to dismantle the Muslim Personal Law Board, SGPC and others and let the minorities come as a secular entity. Let's, okay, let I, them, I, I dare, that, I, that I, I, a, they will that, not be able to do that it. Is a that is a, that's a very serious challenge you have posed. I don't know whether mm. that, that kind of a challenge can be taken up by any government in this country. But hopefully some kind of a reassurance, some kind of a clarity has come after this half an hour debate uh, as far as the statement made by the Minority Affairs Minister is concerned. We'll wait and watch. Hopefully that, you know, this, this controversy will end here and soon. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Rahman Khan, Mr. Soli Surabji, Wajat, Habibullah, Sambit Patra and Javed Nakvi. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time on Monday. 
Meanwhile, have a great weekend.